Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby. I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, Chief. Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Oh, yeah, How it's great we, to see you. Uh, gonna... Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, are we going to talk football today? Yes, today is we're talking football. And uh, we, we got a chance to hang out a little bit this, <clears throat> this weekend, Saturday. I think that's what's wrong with my voice. I was doing a lot of screaming uh, during the game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm super excited about our next guest today. Uh, he has served in the world's greatest Air Force and also played for my favorite team, the world's greatest sports franchise, also affectionately known as America's team. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. So today's guest is part of our Veterans Day series here on Chief Chat. He is a true American hero. He deployed twice as an Air Force pilot to the Persian Gulf. He also spent nine years as a defensive tackle with the Dallas Cowboys winning three Super Bowls. Please help me welcome Chad Hennings to Chief Chat. Hey. Yay. Good day to you all. Good day. Good day. Ch Chad, it's uh, gr great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. And can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from today? I am coming to you live from my home in Flower Mound, Texas. The great state of Texas. Amen to that. <laughs> That's great. And uh, were, you, uh, were you out at the game on Saturday? Yes, I was. Unfortunately, uh, Air Force came up on the short end of the stick, and I actually went 0-2 this weekend with both the Falcons succumbing to the West Point Cadets, and then my Dallas Cowboys got beat by the Denver Broncos. Man, I was going into the weekend so optimistic, thinking we are going to go 2-0, but we came up short in both games. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I had a rough weekend as well. Um, my, my LSU Tigers got beat. Uh, I, I kind of figured they would, to be honest with you, but but my Cowboys and, of course, Air Force lost. Uh, so uh, I did make this um, friendly wager with the star major out there in Europe. So we have a, a senior enlisted advisor uh, out there for the AFES in, uh, in in Pacific. I'm sorry, not in Europe. And uh, we, we, we made a wager that the, the, win the loser has to uh, post themselves singing the other services uh, song. Uh, on social media, oh. so I, yeah, so I'll be I'll be singing That's the gorgeous. army song and and posting it to my social media at some point uh, throughout today. So it's it's gonna be rough on me, definitely rough on me. Humility is a terrible thing at times, is it not? Oh man, and, and so this is a lesson learned for everybody out there. Stop! Don't gamble. Gambling is a horrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Jeez. Exactly. Well, Chad, um, I'm a Midwestern girl and you're a Midwestern guy. You grew up on a farm in Iowa and ultimately joined the Air Force Academy. What called you to the Academy in Colorado? Yeah, great question. I, you know, growing up on a farm, I was taught a lot about the great American work ethic uh, from a very young age, was taught about the aspect of overcoming odds to dedication, commitment, etc. And I really wanted to have a quote unquote collegiate experience that was kind of above and beyond the norm. I wasn't, you know, I was recruited, but I wasn't highly recruited to play football and to wrestle actually. And I wanted to have that division one college football experience. And I wanted to quote unquote test to see if I had the right stuff where I could be challenged at an institution of higher learning that was kind of beyond the norm. So that's why uh, I applied and I was accepted to go to the Air Force Academy and I was able to get a phenomenal education, you know, play Division One college football, as well as have the opportunity to serve our country and ultimately fly as a pilot flying A-10s um, for four years. And, and I must say, and, and, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lee, I cut in, but those A-10s, 
those are one of the the baddest airplanes that we got in our in our inventory here. So uh, that's awesome that you got a chance to to fly those. Yeah, you bet. And I think our our yeah. Army compatriots as well as our Marine friends, if you're ever on the ground, the A-10 is your best friend with that close air support coming and rolling in with that gal weight, that uh, Gatling gun. It uh, can do a lot of damage, and it, it has protected a lot of troops during its life as a uh, closer support weapon system. Wow. And Chad, when did you realize that you wanted to become a pilot? You know, that that um, was never really took effect till I got to the Air Force Academy. After my freshman year, during our summer training programs, I was able to fly in glider aircraft. And I was able to, um, you know, just hear <laughs> fly solo in gliders and and that was what really spurred my desire to want to fly and then also at the academy we were able to go to what at the time was called the t-41 program it was a kind of lead into what pilot training was going to be like and that you know that sealed the deal and i was fortunate enough to be able to receive waivers because i'm a little large both weight wise as well as height wise <laughs> to be able to fly. So I received waivers and um, I was able to go to pilot training, went through Shepard Air Force Base and and had a great experience there. Yeah, so I, I got a chance to see you um, in passing. Uh, I think it was Friday. They, uh, they had the pep rally in the in the where well, they had a pep rally and a kind of a social event. And I saw you walk by and and I I was like, man, that, that's a pretty big guy. I like, <laughs> like tall. I'm not talking about your weight, but you, I was like, man, that's a pretty tall guy. And then I, when you got closer, I was like, oh my God, that's, that's Chad Hennings. I'm going to be interviewing him. And I didn't want to get all too crazy and, and call your name from across the, the thing. Like, like, I, like, you know me or whatever. So, so I, yeah, ex exactly. You should have. Exactly. Steve, you should have. That'd have been hilarious. But, we could have done a pre pre interview for the interview. Absolutely, but I was think I was thinking in my mind. I'm like, I I'm just imagining you in the coach in like the back row trying to fit into this like pilot, seat, you know, this this small pilot seat. I was like, man, that that must have been tough to be in a fighter kind of a small airplane and, and be that tall and th that big of a guy in an airplane. Man, I, I, that couldn't have been that comfortable. You know, when you're when you're young in your early twenties. You, you have a certain mindset that you can accept certain sacrifices and certain inconveniences. And when you want to do something bad enough, I'm, I mean, you'll do whatever it takes to be able to do that. And, and for me, I was limited to the number of aircraft that I could actually fly. They went, I couldn't fit into an F-16. Regarding fighters, it would have had to have been like an F-15 or, or the A-10. And I am so glad that I received the assignment to fly the A-10 because the mission, the close air support mission, you know, flying it back in the day when we still had kind of had that Cold War scenario where I could fly all over Germany. I was based in England and we deployed to Germany all the time to kind of protect that fold of gap. To fly anywhere in Germany at 500 feet and on certain ranges get down to 100 feet and, you know, to interact with our, our Army brothers and in, in, um, rolling in and doing different support missions with the helicopters, the Apaches, etc. that they had. It uh, it was a phenomenal experience, and I'm and I'm so glad that I did it and was able to do it. But I don't think they'd waver me any longer if I wanted to go back and fly. <laughs> I know they would, because I asked a question after I finished with the Cowboys. I said, you know, can I? Would you guys waver me? And it's like, man, no. You had your your time in the sun, son, and move on, do something else. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so so you are like the most decorated athlete from the Air Force Academy. So you. How did you balance being a pilot, a student, and an all-American athlete? Well, when you're there, you, they really the purpose of the academy is to really kind of overload you, so you can learn how to prioritize. You learn how to to deal with different types of stress because our whole purpose at the academy was to ultimately prepare us to be officers in the Air Force. And many of us at the time wanted to be fighter pilots and to to be pilots and to fly aircraft. And no matter if you get there as a as a you're flying a a training mission or a combat mission, they're all just as stressful at times because you've got to execute your mission. So balancing it, we learned to do, you know, whatever you had to take, take the task at hand and you learn just to, to deal because that was your, that was your lifestyle. That's what you did. And during your career 
in the Air Force. You deployed twice to the Persian Gulf. When you first became a pilot, did you ever imagine you'd be flying these types of missions so critical to our to our nation and our security? That's what every every fighter pilot dreams about. That every pilot dreams about testing your metal, and that's what we we were excited. We were excited to go. Nobody wants to go to war per se, but you want to be able to test to see again. Like the reason why I went to the Air Force Academy to see if I had the right stuff was the same thing that you train and you train and you train. It's kind of like make a football metaphor that all you do is practice, but you never get to play in the game. It gets kind of boring after a while. So <laughs> we were able to finally get the opportunity to go and to employ, actually develop different tactics because it was a whole different scenario from what we we had trained for in a Central European scenario to fly now into Northern Iraq and do the missions that we did of reconnaissance and, and um, protecting the Kurds that we were and provide comfort and uh, Northern Watch, the two operations that I flew in, so it uh, it was a challenge, but um, but that's what every every fighter pilot wants to to be in that scenario. Wow! And then, uh, Chad, let's talk football a little bit more. So you were then drafted in the eleventh round of the nineteen eighty eight draft by Tom Landry. Um, so with your commitment to the Air Force still ahead of you, um, did you ever envision that you'd play in the NFL? You know, it was one of those things I always kind of hoped and dreamed, but I had a commitment. And that was the one thing that I learned from my parents and learned up growing up on a farm is that your word is your bond. And you cannot compromise that. And once you do, you can never get that back. So I knew I was going to fulfill my commitment. And it was very fortunate for me that I was able to do both because – you know, the Cowboys secured my rights um, by drafting me in the 11th round, but I had that military commitment. I had a minimum of eight years to serve, um, more so than the five years of your typical cadet commitment time. But I chose to go through pilot training, so it was eight. But, you know, God, thank God that I was able, you know, I think it was truly divine providence that I was able to to play for the Cowboys because after the first Gulf War, armed forces went through the reduction force where they waived you know, not only my commitment, but they waved across the board individuals, their, my pilot training commitment, the additional three years, as well as they waived 24 months off of our service academy commitments. A lot of my friends went to go fly for the airlines at that time. And then I raised my hand and said, hey, I can go give a shot for playing for the Dallas Cowboys. But it was what was weird. I mean, what was made it even more of a challenge is Tom Landry and Clint Murchison and Tech Schramm, they had sold the team to Jerry Jones and our first coach at the time, Jimmy Johnson. So they really had no idea you know, who I was. Uh, they knew who I was, but hey, who's this guy who's been away from football for four years? Is he in shape? Is he, is he able to even play? So I flew my, you know, I was, the Cowboys flew me from London Heathrow Airport on a Friday morning, flew into Dallas, did a workout. Um, they liked what they saw and coach Johnson said, Chad, you know, when can you come join us? I had no idea. I mean, none of this was ever, ever done before, particularly in the air force. So I went back to where I was based and stationed at our event waters, Woodbridge, the twin bases there in the UK. And I submitted my paperwork and within three weeks, I was out processed out of the air force in Dallas, getting ready to, to go through training camp for my first time. So Guys, my claim to fame is I flew my last mission in northern Iraq in 92 and played the Super Bowl the same year. Oh, wow. Incredible. That's awesome. I'm trying to imagine how you can get in football shape uh, coming off like a PT test or something. Because I, I know I'm, I, I can pass the PT test, but I, there's no way that I can go out there and, and, and probably you know, be qualified it, to be president of the league. It, it was challenging, but, you know, the, the beauty of that was being deployed as we were at Inserlik, flying those missions for, you know, two, three months stints. If you weren't flying, what else were you going to do? So we sat around, ate, you know, ate pizza, you know, drank beer, so I put on weight and, and worked out. And uh, yes. I built up and I was in shape. I was probably in some of the best shape that I ever was. And uh, it was, the timing was just perfect. It was just perfect. Well, I would say physical shape, but football shape, you know, having to uh, to actually hit somebody and get hit. Now, that was a whole different story. And that was kind of like <laughs> learning to ride a bike after four or five years after you haven't done it. I had a lot of rust, but it chipped off pretty quick. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and your position, you got to do more of the hitting than get get hit. So so that's always good too. Well, I, I tell you what, when you get hit though by two, three hundred twenty, three hundred twenty five pound guys trying to hold up. Oh, that's true. Team, that's not much fun. And it, it kind of <laughs> gets old after a while, but that's your job. Sacrifices must be made, right? No, absolutely. And so, I mean, so, of course, you know, every football player will consider their career fulfilled with just one Super Bowl. But, man, you you had three Super Bowls in the span of four years. So uh, it's kind of like picking, you know, I hate to ask you this question, it's like picking your, your favorite kid. Um, was there any Super Bowl that meant more than the other or, or felt a little bit better than the other? You know, there's always the special one is, is the first one because that's your first experience. But probably my best game that I would look back on with the most fondest memories was the, the third one against the Pittsburgh Steelers, the one that they, we had at Phoenix, Super Bowl 30. In that game, I was fortunate enough to get a couple sacks against Neil O'Donnell, and I actually had a Super Bowl record or tied for a Super Bowl record for number of sacks in a Super Bowl with two, but Reggie Wright broke it the next year. When Green Bay played New England, he got two and a half. So very limited time in the spotlight on that one. But that would have been my favorite game that I played in. Well, well, Reggie White was the minister of defense. And, and yeah, it's, you know, if you're going to lose a record to anybody, I think he's 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 a, he was a good dude to, to lose it to. He came into that. And then, Chad, um, you're known for your character and leadership abilities um, throughout your football career. So can you tell us a little bit about your approach to leadership? Yeah, my, you know, having had the experience I did you know, growing up through athletics and again, growing up you know, on a farm where, again, your word is your bond. And then going through the service academy where those skill sets of integrity, of character, of humility, of commitment, of sacrifice, of playing on a team, all those things their brain they become a part of who you are and then I saw that you know having had those experiences I, I truly believe that God put me in a position to influence others so it's kind of that I'm at that phase of my life right now where it's all about mentorship it's all about discipleship it's about making an impact with others and my style of leadership is if you're going to leave you got to leave from the front you got to set the example you know I could sit here and I could teach a class where I write on a whiteboard you know, define all these different character traits. To truly have a transformational component in someone's life, it has to be demonstrated. It has to be modeled. It has to be practiced. And that's what I encourage, particularly young kids, get out there. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I've made plenty of them. But you can't not try. you got to get off the bench and get into the game. And that's what, for me, leadership is all about encouraging others, motivating others, setting the example, and holding people to a higher standard that is above and beyond self. Oh, yeah. Those are those are outstanding words, and we appreciate that. Uh, you, you know, leadership is so huge in the military, uh, and, and they, they develop us at a very young age. So uh, I, I've been very fortunate to, to have learned from some amazing and just the institution of the military been able to kind of put me in positions where – I had to kind of get out of my comfort zone and lead. And, and uh, I, like I said, I picked up so many nuggets uh, across the across the, the time I've been in the military service. And uh, what you said is spot on. So I appreciate those words. And of course, this week is, is Veterans Day week. So man, this is a very special week for uh, uh, all the men and women that have served uh, in, in the military. And we got a bunch of them watching from all over the world right now. So do you have any words you'd like to share uh, to all those who have served? Well, for all those who have served, you know, thank you for your service. It takes a rare individual that is willing to put themselves in the harm's way to serve. You know, individuals sometimes when they're not necessarily felt as a as, as you are and as you should be, but to go do that selflessly, to be away from family, to be away from friends, to put yourself in positions of high stress and anxiety and sometimes fear, but have the courage to step forward and step up to the plate day after day. I applaud all those veterans and particularly all those still on active duty. And I thank you for all your service and commitment to our country, to me, you know, to my family. Kudos and, and much applause. 
Thank you so much for that chat. I know that means a lot to those who are watching with us today. And speaking of our viewers, you have a lot of fans out there. I want to just turn really quickly to our live feed and let you know about some of the comments that are being left. Um, Patricia Smith says, hello from Folsom, California. She is an Air Force mom of three. And let's see, sorry. Um, Bruce Seibert says, try being six foot four and 216 at 17 years old in the second seat of a Cobra, LOL. <laughs> Glad it wasn't a pilot with the Colonel that took me. Um, Mario Garza says, I always enjoyed watching Chad play football at the Air Force Academy. His claw after a sack was classic. Plus, being from Texas, he played for my favorite team, the Cowboys. Uh, Terry Hill says uh, that she's looking forward to your singing debut, Chief. And she also left a message for Chad. <laughs> she said, much respect for our military pilots. My brother was a gunner in the Air Force with multiple deployments. I'm very grateful he is retired. And she thanks you for your service. And then on Chief's page, Annette Cortez, she's left you a bunch of heart eye emojis, so she's uh, she's been some blue heart. So she's very happy here with us today. Uh, she's uh, she says like a fan girl. So you have a big fan out there in Annette Chad and Richie Whitmer from Inserlick. Um, he is from Inserlick, and I believe he works with AFN. He says that he would love to have you as a guest on AFN and Inserlick as well. So. Um, you're getting a lot, a lot of love out there just for being here with us today. Thank you. That, that's awesome. And I'm very humbled to, to be on. And, you know, I look back, guys, and I can honestly say that I've been asked many times, would you rather go back and play for the Cowboys or go back and fly A-10s again? And I'd go back and fly A-10s in a heartbeat. <laughs> that's terrific. Good deal. <laughs> And Chad, uh, since leaving football, you've become a motivational speaker and author. So can you give us a little insight into how you got into that? And then what message are you wanting to convey to your audience? You know, one of the things I think for me, it's, it's all about identity. I talk about the aspect of, you know, excellence in all we do, one of the core values of the Air Force. You know, for me, living excellence is, it's not necessarily just how you do in the X's and O's of your particular job, because what you do does not define who you are. Um, it's all about identity, establishing identity and then walking it out daily with, as we talked about with character and integrity. So for me, I've been able to do a lot of different things in my life, where that was as a student athlete, as a fighter pilot, as a professional athlete, football player. You know, I have a commercial real estate company now. I've written several books. And I do, you know, the motivational speaking thing, too, and talk about character and leadership. So for me, it, I tell people, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, don't let being a fighter pilot define you as to who you are, because you're going to only do that for a finite period of time. That doesn't necessarily put you in that category. So, you know, when you lead and, and you're trying to live that life of excellence, it's about living to be your best self today. Encourage others to do the same and, and then any organizations or teams that you're affiliated with to include your family, you know, encourage those around you to rise to that higher noble purpose or cause. And for me, that's what it lives about being living excellence on a day to day. So I've been very fortunate to have done a lot of different things. And, you know, it's just what do I do today? Let me make a difference today. I love that. That's great advice um, for everyone to live and be your best self every day and live for excellence. That's that's terrific. Thank you. And it, you have been um, you've had an amazing Air Force career, an amazing football career. So you know, you know firsthand about being excellent and what it can do for you and how it can make your your life all the better. So thank you for sharing those wise words with us. Before we before we wrap up, uh, can you remind our viewers where they can go to follow you online or learn more about you and, what, and what's ahead for you? You bet. Um, I think that if you want to get in touch with me, you can just go. I have a website, chat, chatheadings.com. So you can go there and, and you know see the different books that I've written, whatnot, if you, you'd like. And I do do the Instagram stuff. My, I'm not the biggest 
poster, but my kids post for me a lot. So I let them do that. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. So that would be great. Got it. Absolutely. So for our viewers, you can also catch this episode on YouTube and Spotify. So uh, please check us out there. Uh, and Chad, you mentioned the the core value, excellence, and all we do. Um, now I'm now that I have to do this bit with uh with the army with this army song. I kind of wish integrity first was somewhere like the way down the line because I'm like, man, I to, I told him I'd do it, so I, I'm gonna have to buckle down and and figure it out. I, I first I got to get the words. So he sent he sends me the words this morning, right? And he's like. Just to make sure you don't get something off an of Air Force site and try to throw some Air Force words, he sends me the words of Army song, and then he sends me this YouTube clip uh, of how you're supposed to sing it. And he he's like, you need to sing it from the diaphragm and and all this good stuff. But it's all good. It's all good. I'm a, I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and Chad, and Chad says you, you have chief. to be excellent. Yes, you have to be excellent yeah. at it. You can't mail it in, Chief. So, so I'm I'm glad you're on the show, Chad, because I've been dealing with the, uh, the my army co-host because they've been pro army. They've been getting all the army swag at the game, and I've been representing the Air Force super hard for the past week, and even at the game. So, uh, thank you for for having a balance on the show right now. <laughs> Look at that. Two v two. That's awesome. That's great. Awesome, awesome. But Chad, man, it's been a, a pleasure and an honor having you with us today. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. This means so much to all our service members and their families and all of our exchange family out there uh, watching uh, today's chief chat. And as well, happy Veterans Day to you as well and, and all the veterans out there in the world. Uh, tomorrow's the Marine Corps birthday. Uh, so I was I was a, a, a prior Marine. So once a Marine, always a Marine. I always, uh, you know, give a shout out to my brother, brothers and sisters in arms uh, in the Marine Corps. So you guys celebrate your birthday tomorrow. But uh, on Thursday, we're going to observe. Uh, Veterans Day and, uh, you know, just big salute to everybody that's worn this uniform. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Take care. Keep Chief awesome, Chad. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Chief Chad out.